You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Hey, Miller. Yeah. Hey, your copy ready? Almost. Well, the old man wants it on his desk now. The old man drinks too much coffee. Ooh, easy, pal. Hey, I'm just passing it on. So what's your column about? Read it in the morning edition, like everybody else. <laughs> hey, that ain't very friendly. I'm not the friendly type. You get too friendly and guys like you start stealing my angle. <laughs> Would I do that? Hey, let me guess. Uh, the new baseball commissioner. No, no, no. The shakeup in the NFL. It sounds like every sports page in the country. Oh, then you must have a juicy one. Say, what's that file you got there? Nothing that it interests you. Uh, jockey disqualified, banned from all U.S. tracks, racing commission denies appeal. Wait a minute, I remember that guy. Got bounced for doping horses in the Triple Crown. What was his name? Brady? Something like that? Write your own story, Maze. Now get lost. I got work to do. All right, all right, I'm going. Me? I'm taking a dinner break. Some people know how to meet their deadlines around here. What do you want? If this is the front desk, I already told you. I'll pay up tomorrow. For the whole week. Got that? Tomorrow. Grady, this is Rich Miller calling. Who? I read a column for the Post. Which paper? Oh, yeah. I seen that, Rad. I wonder if I could ask you a few questions. Miller, huh? Wait a minute. I know who you are. You're a creep. Mr. Grady, I just want to set the record straight. I said creep. Don't Mr. Grady me. I can read. Yeah, I can read, all right. Every now and then, I get a look at your column, and afterwards, I need a stomach pump, you know? Because it makes me sick. If you give me a minute, I'm willing to print your side of the story. Look, Fink, don't nuzzle up to me. Three years ago, you stuck in the first shift, only you got it wrong. I didn't have nothing to do with horse doping. I didn't say you did. You didn't, huh? Get off your elbows, you Judas. You had me hung out to dry from the start. A couple of fast pages on the old typewriter, that's all it took. And I got a 60-day suspension. I think you have me mixed up with somebody else. Oh, is that a fact? Well, listen, baby. You can play it real safe now. You're 50 blocks away. But if you was in my room here, I'd fix it so they could scrape you off the wall and spoon you into a cup all by myself. Some people say you got a bum deal if you'd care to make a statement. Yeah, here's your statement. This is Grady to the press. You're all a bunch of grave digging finks with delusions. Print that, hyena, and don't forget to spell my name right. Chump. Yeah, you in the mirror. Some jockey you are. A couple of lousy fixes, and you fall off your mount. The big boys walk away with all the money, the bills, the bundles. What do you get? Chump change and black and blue silks, like a real patsy. Look at yourself. Nothing plus nothing equals nothing. So what do you do now? Maybe, maybe rent a carriage? Drive lovers through Central Park? Yeah, right. Grady, you kill me. You really knocked me out. You dumb little shrimp. There isn't a mother's son in the whole world as dumb as you are. Now what am I supposed to do? Will you tell me that? What in this stinking world can I do, huh? The name is Grady, five feet short in stockings and boots, a slightly distorted offshoot from an old and honorable breed of humans who raise horses. But this happens to be one of the rotten apples in the barrel, bruised and yellowed by dealing in dirt. A short man with a short memory, who somewhere along the line forgot that he worked for the sport of kings and helped turn it into a cesspool. 
used and misused by certain two-legged animals who have hung around sporting events since the days of the Colosseum. So this is Grady in a flea bag hotel room on his last night as a jockey. Behind him are Hialeah, Hollywood Park, and Saratoga. Just now, he's rounding the clubhouse turn and coming up fast in the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Last Night of a Jockey, starring Bruno Kirby with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Around the far turn, it's Baby Needs a New Pair of Shoes, Two Lengths Back, Jazz Bakery, followed by Janine L., Lovely Lita, Stratisfaction, Red Dreams, Double Edge, and trailing is Taz. Now, Lovely Lita makes a move on the inside, passing up Janine L., Jazz Bakery, and challenging the favorite, Baby Needs a New Pair of Shoes. Grady's really using the whip. It's Lovely Lita, and Baby Needs a New Pair of Shoes. Lovely Lita bearing down the stretch, they're neck and neck, and it's Lovely Lita, the winner by two lengths. Hey, get a shot of the winner. Look this way, Grady. Smile. Who would have thought? Even the number one horse. You did good out there, Grady. Yeah. Didn't I, though? Yeah, I never saw a leader run like that before. Well, she had a good jockey this time. Well, at 12 to 1, you sure made some folks happy today. You don't know how right you are. Good boy, Grady. <laughs> you did the job. Sure I did the job. What did I tell you? So, Mr. Hanacek, you got an envelope for me? Cool it down first. Then come over to the trailer. The grooms can walk. I got... I got to take care of some stuff. So I was thinking, Mr. Hanacek, if, if it's all the same to you. What's the big hurry, Grady? I just like to get paid, is all. Don't worry about it. You'll get what's coming to you. Like the man said, what's the big hurry? No hurry. I got to put my gear away. Like maybe a uh, needle? What are you talking about? Sure came to life in the stretch, didn't she? I wonder where she got all that speed. Some people might say it was amphetamines. Say, so you better watch your mouth, fella. I don't like what you're inferring. No? No, I don't. Who do you think you are anyway? We're from the racing commission. Nice meeting you. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hold up. Just till we do a urine test on the horse. You can wait in the car. We don't want any trouble. Get your mitts off of me. Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, hey. How goes it, Mr. Grady? <laughs> what? Bunched up at the turn? Slowed down by a muddy track? Who in the... Just an interested observer, that's all. With a question for you. How goes it in your world? All right, what's the gag? What's the gag? I just thought you might appreciate some company. A little conversation, perhaps. Okay, wise guy. You made your point. Now, where are you? Hiding under the bed? Where? Why, here I am, Mr. Grady. Between your frontal lobes. Take a look in the mirror. What? Nestle securely among those gray convolutions you've gotten there. Between the temples. That's it. See? And that's supposed to mean what? Don't I speak clearly enough? My apologies. But I thought you'd know this voice well. It should be very familiar to you. Talk straight! You got something against the English language? To put it simply, I'm in your head, Mr. Grady. Oh, is that a fact? You're inside my head. So how is it in there? Comfortable enough for you? Comfortable? <laughs> hey, cut that out, would you? This room ain't big enough for the both of us. You're making my head hurt. You'll forgive me, Mr. Grady, but you must admit, it is a funny question. What's funny about it? Comfortable inside your head? It's like sleeping in the middle of 42nd Street during a parade. Noisy, crowded, and quite uncomfortable. To be blunt, I'm sick of it. Time to come out for a while and have a stretch, if you don't mind. What do you mean? Where? 
Look in the mirror over your dresser. Ah, that's much better. Hey, what is this? Some kind of trick? No trick, I assure you. But you... You look just like me. Except you're all dressed up. And the way you got your hair combed, like some kind of uptown guy with bucks. You like the effect? I picked the jacket and tie with you in mind. And the hair. The way you used to wear it. When you still cared about your appearance. Say, what's going on here? I must be going wacko. Oh, why don't you just get out? Go on, move it. Out of my room. Now, scram. And go where? Back in your head? Why, this is much better. And so much roomier than that pea brain of yours. Enough with the insults. Who the heck are you? <laughs> I'm you, Mr. Grady. Your memories, all your recollections, and all your aspirations. Big deal. I'm every one of your failures and defeats. And yet I also wear the wreath of all your victories. In short, Mr. Grady, I'm what you'd call your alter ego. Me? I wouldn't call you nothing like that. No, I suppose you wouldn't. Yeah, sure. So what do you want? I think the more apt question would be, what do you want? Are you kidding? What do I want? That's right. After all, you are a dumb little toad, aren't you? Watch it, buddy. But that's what you call yourself, an ugly little toad. Or was it shrimp? Why else would you wear elevator shoes and stand on your suitcase in front of the mirror? The bathroom mirror? I have to. When I shave, uh, they hung it wrong. Sure they did, Mr. Grady. Why don't you knock it off? Take a hike. Go for a walk on the short pier. How do I get you out of here? In a word, you don't. You live with me, knowingly, from this point on. You might even come to find me interesting. That'll be the day. After all, I know you pretty well. There isn't one secret thought that's crossed your mind, not one, that I don't know. There isn't a painful memory, an unpleasant recollection, or a bitter little shame that I'm not aware of. Bitter little shame. You don't know me from Seabiscuit, buddy boy. Just so we understand each other, I got no little shames. I got no painful recollections either. Oh, come now, Mr. Grady. I mean, really. Shall we look it up in the little old record book? Two years ago, suspended from Hialeah. Riding infractions. They never even heard my side of the story. Last year, six months suspension. Failure to report a bribe offer. They set me up. And most recently, Mr. Grady, the triple crown of an illustrious career. Lifetime suspension, race fixing, and horse doping. I never had a trial. So here you sit, on an unseasonably hot September evening, in a dirty little room, rent overdue, essentially friendless, career kaput, roughly six to eight dollars in your jeans. This, in a nutshell, is the odyssey of Grady the Jockey. 100 million miles from the winner's circle without so much as a withered wreath to your name. Is it any wonder, Mr. Grady, that an occasional phantom will spring out from the woodwork? Or should I say, from that solid mahogany head of yours? And offer you at least a modicum of solace? You don't have to offer me nothing, and I mean nothing. No? I don't need you. A year from now, you hear me? A year from now, I'll be back up. I'll be right back where I belong, riding six winners a day. <laughs> You'll be driving a carriage in Central Park, Mr. Grady. Or perhaps a fast milk wagon out in the Bronx, unloading homogenized dairy goods. Get out of here. Oh, no, Mr. Grady. I wouldn't think of it. You need me. I'm one of the few uniquely welcome things to happen to you since you first saw the harsh light of day. In short, Mr. Grady, you have desperate need of me. Very desperate indeed. I said split.
Ha! <laughs> Fink! Where are you now, Fink, huh? Like pneumonia, I need you. Like a fractured leg. Like a three-legged trotter for a steeplechase. That's how I need you. Who did you think you were talking to, huh? Who, I said? All I have to do is pick up that telephone, see? I call Hanacek. I say to him, Hanacek, I handle the fix. Now let's have the payoff. And you know what happens? Inside of an hour, I got plane fare to Puerto Rico. That's what happens. Next week, I'm riding in the warm sun, and two years from now, I'm back here officially wearing my old silks again. That's what happens. Then why don't you? Huh? Why don't you call Hanacek? Go ahead, Mr. Greedy. Give him a buzz. All right. I will. Yeah, this is Grady. Had to check around? Well, I want to talk to him. Never mind the message. This is personal. Just put him on. How to check? Grady. You what? Surprised. What's to be surprised about? I'm sitting down here in a pit. All by my lonesome. I got eight bucks to my name, and somebody just knocked me off my mount. I'm the one who took the fall. What do you expect me to do? Write a will and take gas? Knock it off. You know what I want. That's right. I think the word is... is... Sustenance. Sustenance. Look it up in a book, Anacek. I'm talking about three squares a day and a little fur to spread around the nest. Anacek, I put it on the line for you. I stole a race and now they got me nailed up. You walked away with a pile. Well, now it's time for Grady to get his. Hanacek! You double cro- Hanacek! Hanacek! Miserable man, isn't he, Mr. Grady? Ungracious, unappreciative, very predatory. But that's the breed. Like all crooks, they take, they never give. You got that right. What's to do now, Mr. Grady? Write a will and take gas? What do I care? That lousy nickel and dimer? A year ago, I could buy and sell him. Buy and sell him! Well, guess what? I don't need you. I don't need him. I don't need anybody. Now make yourself scarce, will you, buddy? You're getting on my nerves. I was a big man once, and I'll be a big man again. You'll see. Ah, now we get to pay dirt. The moment of truth. The acid test. The ultimate coming together of forces. What are you jarring about? Merely that you can have your heart's desire, Mr. Greedy. The time has come at last. Now you'll finally get what you want. What I want? Yes. Whatever it is that you want. More than anything else in the world. So think it over carefully, Mr. Greedy. Think it over. Won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. What's the rib? Consider it your true payoff after such a checkered career. You know something? I don't understand a word you're saying. Think about it. Only a year ago, you were strutting around the country on the thoroughbred circuit. You wore shiny shoes, new clothes, you tipped big. You had some compensation then, Mr. Grady. Compensation for what? For the fact that you're the runt of the litter. For the unpleasant realization that all your life you've had to stand tiptoe just to see what's around you. Let me tell you something. If I had you around here for very long, I'd compensate you, but good. You do have me, Mr. Grady. Now you do. I'm no longer content to remain in the shadows, basking in the glow of your reflected glory. The time has come to turn over a new leaf, wipe the slate clean, make a fresh start. Face it, you want to be respected, admired, looked up to, don't you? You hate to get off a horse, because in the saddle, you're as high as the sky, and on Mother Earth. You're a half pint. And I'm telling you, get out of here. Make tracks, 
Pronto. First, tell me what it is that you want. This is the moment. Seize it. What? What do you really want? What do I want? What do I want? Such as? Anything. All you have to do is name it. Because believe me, you deserve it. What I want is... is... I want to change what I see every time I look in the mirror. Or in the window when I'm walking down the street in people's eyeballs. When they're staring at me. That's right. Let it all out. I don't want to look in there and see a... a shrimp. A toad. A fink. You know what, man? I want to be the biggest. I mean, I want to loom. I want people to look up to me. Poor Mr. Grady. You dreamless, put-upon little man. How cheap you come. What a cut-rate little article you are, after all. You want size? That's your heart's desire? You want to be a giant among men? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Is that all? Is that really all? Cool it, you're giving me a headache. I gotta lie down for a minute. Go ahead, Mr. Grady. Be my guest. We wouldn't want to overwork that gigantic brain of yours, would we? <laughs> <laughs> Have anything else to say on your behalf, Mr. Gray? Yeah, Mr. Commissioner. I got plenty to say. I'm a jockey. That's how I make my living. You got no right to take a man's livelihood away from him. What makes you so high and mighty? Racing's a dirty game, all right? But you're making it so dirty, you should go home and take a bath. It ain't me. I'm just a little guy trying to get by. I didn't shoot up no horse with dope. All I did was ride, which is the one thing I know how to do. The only thing. I ride good, get me? Real good. You take away my license, and I can't put food on the table. What am I supposed to do? Fix horseshoes? You know how much that pays? I might as well disappear. Hole up someplace, sleeping in the stalls till I get put out the pasture. But how am I supposed to eat till then? Can you tell me that? You gotta give me another chance. Instead of making me take the fall for the big shots, you gotta give me a chance. It is the judgment of this commission that you be banned from the sport of horse racing in the continental United States for the remainder of your life. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's all, Mr. Grady. Your license is hereby revoked. Hold on. You can't do that. Listen to me. This hearing is over. You're dismissed. No. 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 No, no, you gotta listen to me. Go ahead, Mr. Greedy. I'm listening. Huh? Have a good rest. A good what? Your nap. I trust it was a good one. Healthful and refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, it was swell. What's it to you? I just wondered what it feels like to have your heart's desire after so long. Ow! Something hit me in the head. The ceiling, perhaps? Hey, this ain't my bed. It can't be. It's too little. It is now. I must still be dreaming. Oh, come now, Mr. Grady. I gotta get a drink of water. If that is your wish, feel free. You can do anything you want. Absolutely anything. Give it a rest, why don't you? Like everything else that's happened in your life, it's entirely up to you. Ow! Who put the bed flat on the floor? Why, no one. It's not the bed that's changed. What's going on here? Oh... I do wish you were more imaginative. Okay, I am dreaming. That's it. Is it? Touch the floor. Go ahead. That's real, isn't it? Touch the dresser. Now touch the wall. Put up your hand and touch the ceiling. Go ahead. Now stand. I can't, okay? It's not high enough. Correct. It's not. For you. These are all very solid objects. They have width, height, thickness, the properties of physical reality. In other words, like you, pinch yourself, why don't you? That's the final test. 
isn't it? That hurts! Of course it does. But how in the... You were offered your heart's desire, Mr. Grady. And what you wished for wasn't a dream. You didn't ask for a simple two-hour escape with Morpheus. You wanted stature. You wanted size. You wanted the view from a long way up and a long way out. Eye level would have been a bad compromise. And as always, anything short of that was defeat. Get away from me. I gotta wash my face. Don't forget to duck. You might even have to bend down a bit. And remember, you won't need to stand on the suitcase to see the bathroom mirror. Not anymore. Hey! Look at me! Yes, look at yourself. You're Mr. Big. You're Hercules. Why, you're the most sizable thing since Paul Bunyan. Any complaints, Mr. Grady? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Look at me! Just look at me! Who, who's gonna talk down to me now? Who can reach that high? Nobody! That's who! So, the question is, what do you do now? You might want to give that a moment's thought. I don't have to think. I know what to do. Celebrate! Wait, I got something. I forgot all about it. There's a bottle of wine stashed around here someplace. Here. Here, wanna have a drink with me? Go ahead, Mr. Grady. Oh, I get it. You can't drink, huh? You do it for me. I'm with you in spirit. Ah. Man, that goes down smooth. Too bad you can't join me. Hmm. I'm joining you now, Mr. Grady. I'm feeling the little heat ripples, just as you are. Well, here's mud in your eye. Oh, man. It's like champagne. You're right. It is quite good. <laughs> this is too sweet. <laughs> Am I gonna enjoy myself? And what will you do first? Anything I want. That's what. Anything. Tell me, Mr. Grady. I'm all ears, in a manner of speaking. I'm gonna get me a dame. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna go over and get that, that dame. That dame? Sure, look at me. I'm a mensch now. A real man. She'll flip. She'll fall all over me. Really? Are you that attractive now? Does size mean that much? Bet your last two bucks, buddy. Watch me. Don't you think you'd better call first? Why? So you won't go all the way over there, only to find that she's not home. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Give me the phone. Careful with the dial. Your fingers barely fit. Get away from me. I can handle it. You'll never believe this. I swear you'll never believe this. But she used to... She used to bend down and pat me on the head. Well, we'll see about that now. What do you say, doll? Who is it? Are you serious? You put me on, ain't you? That's right. It's Grady. Don't try the cold shoulder with me, honey. I know you're too good. That's right. This is me, your ex-meal ticket. And those were eight-course meals, baby. Don't you forget it. What I want is the following. First, remember who you're talking to. That's number one. All right. It's more like it. Now try this on for size. When I was in the money, I spread it around. Remember? Sure you do. All right. Now I'd like you to... Reciprocate. That's it. Reciprocate me a little bit. You heard me. Look it up. Take one of those baubles off your wrist, toots. Hang on to the pawn ticket and send the cash over here. What do you care for how long? Who bought it for you in the first place? Hold it. You haven't heard the news yet, honey. Just shut up and listen. That's better. See, I'm a big man now. I mean big. What are you laughing at? It's true. Everything's different now, babe. Will you put a cork in it? I'm 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, More than that, surely. No, make that seven feet. Yeah, seven plus. Seven and a half, at least. That's what I said. Any minute, the Lakers are going to be sending one of them crummy talent scouts over here. You'll see. Yeah. Huh? Would I lie to you? I tell you, I've grown, really grown. Will you listen? Why, you cheap little alley cat. I don't take that kind of talk off anyone. Nobody calls me an ugly little runt. Nobody. That's what I said, especially you. Forget it. Go someplace and die for all I care. And I hope it's long, tough, and really, really painful. 
That's what I wish for you. Well done, Mr. Grady. Just my luck. I gotta go call on a cheapskate with my hat in my hand. A dirty little gimme gimme like that one. You managed to flex your vocal cord in a very manly fashion. At this rate, women all over the world will be flocking to your doorstep. So I struck out once. Big deal. I could pick up the phone and call half a dozen dames better looking than her. Why am I singularly unimpressed? You will be impressed, buddy. You will be. I certainly hope so. What did I tell you? Here comes one now. Are you sure? What do you mean, am I sure? Remember your heart's desire. Do you know what that is? Of course I know. Take care, Mr. Grady. Give it some thought. Some very careful thought. Are you quite sure that you're ready? Because whatever you've wished for, something tells me that you're about to get it after all. In spades. Yeah, this is him. What about my voice? Too loud for you? <laughs> All right, sport, give it to me again. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Which lawyer are you talking about? What's his name? Never heard of him. You have him call me. I might have to go out for a while, so tell him to make it quick. I ain't got all night. Yeah, go ahead and give him my number. What was that all about, Mr. Grady? Who knows? Some guy from a law office or something? Says I'm getting a call from some other lawyer. At night, can you believe that? Must be important. That's because I'm important now. Sure, that's it. Hey, you still here? I'm still here. How come you're hanging around anyway? I'd say we have some unfinished business, you and I. Level with me. Are you my imagination? Is that it? I'm afraid you don't have very much imagination, Mr. Grady. Then who are you? What are you? What's all this alter ego jazz? I thought you understood by now. I'm your conscience. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't look much like Jiminy Cricket to me. Well, I'll put it another way, Mr. Grady. This is something of an oversimplification. But for purposes of identity, I'll try to make it clear and succinct. I'm the fate every man makes for himself. Would you just talk for once and take off the training wheels? I'm doing my best. You generally find me down at the bottom of the barrel. I'm the strength dredged up out of desperation. I'm the last bit of seaweed that a drowning man scrapes for with his cold, dying fingers. I'm the last gasp, Mr. Grady. That's supposed to be clear? Man, I just don't dig you. For my money, you're a big fat nothing with a mouth full of two dollar words. Oh, I'm not nothing. I'm something, Mr. Grady. I'm really and truly something. In certain cases, something very good, depending on the person I'm representing. I can work miracles. I may come with heroism, sacrifice, strength. Even more than that, I may epitomize everything noble in the human spirit. Now, in your case, Mr. Grady, the requirements were quite small. Your dreams rather insignificant, taken all together. Your aspirations hardly worth mentioning in the greater scheme. What do you mean, small? What do I mean? Only this, Mr. Grady. If you had asked to win the Kentucky Derby, and win it cleanly and with honor, that would have been quite a monument to your career. Or if you'd asked to perform an act of pure, selfless heroism, and let that be the qualification for the respect you seek, this too would have been exemplary. But as it is, what was your heart's desire? To be a big man. Big in the sense that your hands can smother telephones, your head can hit the ceiling with every step you take, your face can overshoot its reflection in the mirror without the help of a suitcase or a stepladder to stand on. I repeat, Mr. Grady, 
You come cheap. You're hardly worth the effort. You're a regular wise guy, ain't you? Well, let me tell you something, buddy. As you wish. All I want, all I ever wanted, was to walk down the street and not get laughed at. I didn't want to be called a freak behind my back. I didn't want to be an ugly little creep. The one they need, but the one they don't like to look at. I didn't want to be kicked around from one track to the next because every time I measured off a guy, I was looking into his belt buckle. You're wrong about me, mister. I don't come cheap. I don't come cheap at all. Because now I got my heart's desire. That plain enough for you? You surprised me, Mr. Grady. A greater depth of feeling than I would have expected. Now you heard it. You can forget about it. Because I'm tired of being low man on the totem pole. I got what I want, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to go out there and have me some fun tonight. The only thing I got to figure out is where to start. I wouldn't begrudge you that. But listen. No, you listen. Open your eyes and look around. The world. And it's just waiting for me. He doth bestride the world like a colossus. What? Someone said that about Alexander the Great. He ended badly, too. A sad and tearful man. When there were no more worlds to conquer. You see any tears in my eyes? I'm not crying. I'm laughing. Look at them all down there. Like ants. They got their big cars and their women and their big fat rolls of money. Now it's my turn. Just wait till I walk in any place I feel like. They'll notice, all right. They'll turn around and stare because every one of them will wish they was me. Give me the two hottest dames in town, one on each arm, and just you watch. I am watching. I'm with you, imagining it all, along with the consequences. Imagining is something you don't do very well, so let me help. The possibilities are endless, but the trick is in the choosing. What's right for you? What can you wear like a beautiful coat of many colors? Or what doesn't become you? What doesn't fit you? If you choose wrong, it will show. It won't enhance your standing. It will destroy you. The burden may be simply too overwhelming. The greater the heights a man attains, the further the fall. Ah, why don't you shut up? Your words are all empty. Just like this bottle. I'm trying to help, honestly. You may not have chosen wisely, but it may not be too late. If you're conscious and careful. Careful nothing. I've been careful all my life. Stand back, everybody. Grady's walking through the universe. Fate calling Mr. Grady? Fate nothing. It's that dame. She must have changed her mind. Yeah, yeah. This is Grady. What about it? Say that again. Would you mind? Are you... Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Do I want to race again? Mister, you show me the horse. Listen, listen. I appreciate this. You don't know how much. You ain't going to regret this. I wouldn't fix a race if I got a million bucks per square foot of track. I wouldn't fix a race if... Yeah, yeah, I understand. You got it. I'll be there with bells on. Good news? Well, hot shot. now what do you think? You know what he just said? Everything's going my way. One phone call and your top dog again? Just like that? Just like that. I'll tell you who that was. The racing commission. A bunch of horse owners put in a petition for me. Can you beat that? They want to give me another chance. Do you understand what that means? Another chance? I'm going to ride again. Oh, Grady's going to mount up and hit the turf like old times. Is that right? Oh, Mr. Grady. <laughs> now what's so funny? Tell me, what's so funny? I'm going to ride again. I'm on top, on top of the world. Think about it. Go into the bathroom and bend down and look at yourself while you're combing that mop of hair and putting on your best riding boots, which won't fit now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, you're right. 
I can't ride like this. I'm too big. I'm way too big. I can't ride like this. Hey, hey, please, make me small again. I'm begging you. Make me the way I was. Do it, will you? Will you do that for me, please? You may have learned your lesson, Mr. Grady, but it's too late. Please. Hey, please. I take it back. Will you make me small again? Will you do that little thing? That's all I ask. Hey. Hey. Hey, listen. I want to be small again. I want to be small. Mr. Grady, you are small. Every time you won an honest race, that's when you were a real giant. But right now, they just don't come any smaller. No. No. No! Where, where are you? Where did you go? Come back! Come back! You still here, Miller? What does it look like? Didn't you finish your column yet? Yeah, I finished it, but now I have to rewrite the whole thing. Well, how come? The old man didn't like it? I just got a call from the precinct, that jockey. He took a dive tonight, out the 17th floor window of the St. James Hotel. No kidding! <laughs> Poor little guy. Little? Yeah, I guess you could say that. There's something weird about the body, though. Yeah, what about it? Yeah, it, it didn't look right. But they ID'd him. It was Grady, no doubt about it. So, now I gotta do my column from scratch. Well... At least you don't have to worry about Grady anymore. They'll cover him in the obit page. Yeah, but how? Something tells me there's more to this story. A lot more. If I only knew what really happened. Hey, <laughs> don't let your imagination run away with you. Remember, this is the sports page, not the literary section. Somebody's gotta tell his story. If I don't, who will? The Last Night of a Jockey. The name is, or was, Grady. Seven feet tall, or was it eight or nine? A slightly distorted offshoot of a decent breed of humans who ride horses in what was once the sport of kings. But unfortunately for Mr. Grady, this court jester learned too late that you don't measure size with a ruler, you don't figure height with a yardstick, and you never judge a man by how tall he looks in a mirror. For a giant is as a giant does. You can make a paramutual bet on that, win, place, or show, at any window, in or out, of the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD. Or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Last Night of a Jockey, starring Bruno Kirby with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, Doug James, Todd Manley, Andy Herman, Sarah Marks, Rick Vargas, Terry Babler, Paul Patch, Vince Amari, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, 
the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.